What's up guys, Visual here, but you can call me James, and in this video I will be showing you 5 Photoshop tips that every graphic designer should know. As graphic designers, we use Photoshop very frequently, and I decided to go ahead and make a video showcasing you some tips that would help you when creating your designs. When planning this video, I tried to ensure that I showcased five tips which you probably haven't actually seen before, and hopefully after watching this video, you will be able to actually learn these specific tips and use them to your advantage, like I said, when you are designing. If you do go on to enjoy the video and any of the following tips do go on to help you, then please be sure to leave a like on the video as that would be much appreciated. Without further ado, let's open up Photoshop and begin to look at these five tips. Okay, so for the first Photoshop tip, I'm going to be showing you how to actually open the same image within two windows. Now, this can be very beneficial for you if you are focusing on a very sort of like detailed project. As well as this, I also find it useful when creating YouTube thumbnails. So it really just does depend. Also, there is actually two ways to do this. So I'm going to start off here with the easiest way, and that's through the navigation window now as you can see on the right hand side of my screen this is the navigator window and if you don't have this up there already all you have to do is head over to window here at the top scroll all the way down to navigator and make sure that that is ticked once you do enable that as you can see you will be able to view that navigator window here on the right hand side here we have a recent thumbnail that I've done for a client morgues however it's just here as an example you can go ahead and you can zoom in on this image you can focus on like a specific detail detail or whatever and as you can see here on the right hand side you will be able to actually view that image in a smaller size hold and drag that window out of its uh, sort of space there and as you can see you will be able to move it freely you can also increase the size of this window here and as you can see it basically just shows that uh, document image in a smaller size this is really important for a YouTube thumbnail because they are zoomed out so you need to make sure that you are able to see every little detail whether that be an image or some text you need to make make sure like I said you can see that. I'm going to drag the navigator window back over here and I will also show you another way that this can be done which is especially used for detailed projects. Okay so for the next way you want to go to window here at the top and you want to go to arrange and then scroll all the way down to new window for whatever your document is named as. Once you do that it will open up that document uh, basically exactly the same and now what you want to do is go back to window back to arrange and select either two up horizontal horizontal or vertical depending on the size of your document. I'm going to go with two up vertical and as you can see it has actually um, done this with a, another document of mine but I can simply go ahead and drag this over. Uh, it's basically like a sort of a split screen Photoshop document. If you do have two monitors then this is more effective but of course I'm only screen recording on one but yes once you do add changes to the main one here so as you can see it will actually appear on the right hand side. Like I said, once you are focusing on very detailed projects and you need to zoom in, but also see what the image is looking like zoomed out at the same time, this works really well. The next tip we have here is displacement maps. Now, I know a lot of you may already know about displacement maps, but I also know a lot of you don't. Displacement maps are perfect if you want to add any glitch effects to your design or even just manipulate them. I'm going to use this wallpaper, for example. Say I wanted to add some glitch effects to it. There are, of course, many ways you can do it. It, but displacement maps are going to be the easiest way to do so. In order to do this, you will actually need some displacement map PSDs. Now, I'm going to leave a link to the ones that I use in the description down below. There is nine of them, and I honestly don't know who created these. I've had these on my computer for literally, I'm going to say like three years. But regardless, it's actually really easy to use these. Um, you can go ahead and open each one up just to see what it does look like and what sort of effect it will do on uh, that design. This one here is a C image. So this is going to be great if you need to sort of manipulate um, the water, I don't know, to add some like ripples. Displacement map number nine has a perfect glitch effect. So what I'm gonna do now is go back to my original document, which is going to be my design for this example. I'm now going to go to filter at the top, select distort and then displace. From here, you can mess around with the horizontal scale and vertical scale. This basically depends on how much uh, of the effect you want to actually see. I'm going to put mine on around about, I'm gonna say four and maybe just 
four again that's three okay there we go once you are done press ok and as you can see from here it will open up a new sort of tab where you can actually select your psd hopefully you remember where you downloaded these displacement maps but regardless once you do find them just literally select on one and click open once you click on one it will add the effect instantly as you can see here we now have a nice sort of glitch effect overall this effect works really well in order to manipulate an image as well as that just a nice little final effect you can add to your designs okay so for the third tip here i'm going to show you how to create this sort of a uh, square stroke style text effect thing basically what this is as you can see it's a nice sort of stroke effect on the text however the stroke is not rounded this text at the top here is using the standard stroke uh, within the blending options tab as you can see it is rounded however the bottom one here has some nice sort of straight edges and in my opinion it looks a lot better in order to do this it's actually fairly simple so what you want to do is actually begin with your text here you want to ensure that the layer is actually rasterized so right click on the layer and go to rasterize type once you've done that you then want to press ctrl j on your keyboard and now from there you want to head over to filter select other and then go to either minimum or maximum minimum is going to create the stroke around the actual text and maximum is going to create the stroke within the text i don't know why you would want to do that however of course the option is there but i'm going to go with minimum and um, once you are on this tab you want to ensure that preserve is on squareness and now you can increase that radius to as much as you want i should have probably changed the color of this so it was easier to see but i'm going to put it on 14 and press ok from here as you can see you can't really see the text too well so first of all you want to actually move this layer below the original text layer and now you can double click on that layer go to color overlay and select the color you want the stroke to be like I said this is a really nice way to actually add a stroke effect without the stroke being round I really like the look of it hopefully you do too okay so for the fourth tip I'm going to be showing you how to create this sort of uh, cloud overlay on your design this is a really nice final effect however you can probably find some other ways to use it this is the final image without the cloud effect and then once I do enable it as you can see it doesn't really create too much of a difference however it does look really nice in my opinion as you can see if we focus here on the right Right hand side I enable and disable it you can see it creates a nice uh, sort of smoke effect some designs it works better than others however in my opinion it's a really nice sort of texture that you can add on top of your work in order to do this you want to start off with one single layer to do that really simple you want to group all of your layers together you can then press ctrl J to duplicate it and then ctrl E to merge that into one single layer from there you want to press ctrl J on your keyboard once again and now we're going to add the clouds really simple to do head over to filter go to render and then select clouds for me it has created red clouds we want to change the color of that so in order to do that really simple you want to head over to the color adjustments tab there at the bottom select gradient map and now from there you want to click on the gradient and select the first default one which is going to be a black to white gradient and then from here you want to make sure that this is clipping mask onto the cloud layer so just right click on it and go to create clipping mask and now you can merge these so press control on the top control on the bottom and then control e to merge that into one single layer now what you want to do is actually change the blending mode so we can see the original design you want to select normal and change that to overlay in my opinion overlay does work the best however However, you can experiment with the other ones and as you can see really nice sort of effect is added on top okay so for the last and final tip I have something more internal within Photoshop that's going to actually make your Photoshop run faster first of all head over to edit there at the top scroll all the way down to preferences and from there you want to select performance of course this only works if your Photoshop is actually running fairly slow however for your memory usage you want to actually increase this um, you want to make sure that it is on around about I'm going to say at the maximum 70% so if it is really low then just increase that however I'm going to keep mine at around about I'm going to say 55 because it is working really well there as well as this another way you can actually increase your Photoshop speeds is by reducing your history states I have mine on 36 however you can actually decrease this basically means the amount of times you can step back I like to keep mine on 36 however if yours is on something like 200 make sure to decrease that because you will see a dramatic effect like I said I'm going to keep mine on around about the 
there and press OK once you are done and then you want to actually go ahead and close your Photoshop and reopen it to see any effects. Like I said that tip is only going to work if your Photoshop is running slow. If it's fine then I would suggest keeping your settings how they are. Anyways guys that's it for the video. Hopefully it did go on to help you. If it did and you learned something then please be sure to leave a like that would be much appreciated. Also it shows me that you want to see more videos like this in the future. Also if you are new to the channel please consider subscribing with post notifications on and you will be notified every time I upload a brand new video. If you wish to improve any of your graphic design skills and you'd like to use the personal packs that I use when designing then please consider checking out my design store I will leave a link to it in the description down below. Finally guys I don't want to make this outro too long winded however I would just like to mention that I have officially left school so hopefully I will have a lot more time on my hands to make videos. Of course I am closing in on 50,000 subscribers on this channel so I'm going to be uploading as much as possible I'm also going to be streaming on this channel and as well as that if you didn't know already I do actually have a personal channel where I will be uploading more videos is currently slacking a bit on there however like I said I am going to try and stay more consistent anyways guys that is it for the video as I said hopefully you did enjoy this has been visual or James and I'm out peace